Hi children, how are you? I hope you all are doing fine. So, let us come to the fourth session of my chapter that is control and coordination. So, welcome to you all. Let us see what all we learned till now. So, first one we studied about the chemical coordination in plants, tropism and its types. We also studied about phytohormones and its types. In the second session, we studied about endocrine glands, types of endocrine glands, its importance and also its functions. In the third session, we studied about nervous system, its types, structure and functions of a neuron and also structure and functions of different parts of central nervous system. And in the next session, we will be studying about parts of a spinal cord, structure and function of spinal cord and most important of all revision. So, what are we studying today? So, today we are studying about the parts of the brain, structure and function of the brain and also most important how to draw a brain, that is very important. So, welcome back. Today we will study about what we studied in our previous class, a bit of revision we can do about that. So, in our previous class we studied about the brain as well as the spinal cord. We studied a few functions of few parts of the brain. You know that this brain and spinal cord come under central nervous system that is CNS. Central nervous system because that is the center of all the messages, impulses, thinking etcetera. So, that is the central nervous system and the brain is protected by a hard cranium, you call it as skull. So, it is protected by skull. Next, you can see that the spinal cord is protected by this part that is the vertebral column. So, the vertebral column which is present surrounding the spinal cord, it protects the spinal cord. Next, inside the skull, you find three membranes surrounding the brain. You call them as meninges. They provide nutrition to the brain. So, that is the three membranes. Next, along with that, we also find in between the skull and the brain, among these membranes, a fluid will move that you call it as cerebrospinal fluid. It moves from brain to spinal cord and from the spinal cord to the brain. So, it acts as a transport system providing nutrition to these parts. That is why it is called as cerebro means brain, spinal means spinal cord, fluid, it is a fluid. This one will provide protection that is it acts as shock absorber. Shock absorber means there should not be any impact on the brain when there is a head injury. This cerebrospinal fluid will act as shock absorber from any minor head injuries. So, it is somewhat protective in nature. Next, we will come to the brain. Let us see the different parts of the brain. So, there are three parts actually. First one is called the forebrain. You can see the uppermost part, you call it as the forebrain and then you find the lower part that is the hind brain. There is one more part, but you cannot see in this diagram, it is inside. So, in the middle you find midbrain. So, there are three major parts, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Okay. You can see the brain of different organisms. First, you can see the human brain, cat brain, rat brain, see the size also. So, you can see the difference, you can see the dolphin's brain, how huge it is. So, you can compare the size and also the intellect also. So, you can see here what are all present here. Next, you coming to the forebrain, this is the biggest part of the brain. In that, what are parts are there? Let us see. Forebrain is made up of cerebrum. Cerebrum from starts from here, ends up to here. So, it is largest part of the brain. Next, below that cerebrum, you find diencephalon. So, these two parts are there. 
So, cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. You can see that nearly 80 percent of the brain is occupied by this cerebrum. Now, let us see what does this cerebrum do? Cerebrum is the major think tank of the brain. It helps in thinking, creating, calculating, memorizing, so many other things, discovering, identifying, inventing, everything is present in this brain. It can receive impulses from various par from various surroundings to the brain. It receives messages from the sense organs to the brain and then whenever it is required, it is utilized. So, all these are done by the brain. It receives information from sense organs and whenever it is required, it is used, you call that as memory. Okay. Now, intellect also is possible mainly because of this cerebrum only. You can see that person blindfolded, he is playing the Rubik's cube, you can see within few seconds, he is capable of forming the same color, all the sides he is successful within few seconds, see he succeeded. It is all intellect, intelligence, brain, source. Now, feelings, even the feelings are controlled by the cerebrum, happiness, sadness, anger, revenge, all the feelings are expressed by this, mainly because of this cerebrum. Next, imagination. You can be in one place, but you can imagine so many things. Look at that kid. Wonderful imagination, right? Okay. Not only that, it also helps you in common sense, whether we have to do this thing or not to do this thing. Now, it is corona time, covid time, how should we, how should we be? Now, there is some, so many people present, should be, should I be with them or should I be away from them? In a public place, I have touched so many substances, should I touch and then just to touch my eyes, ears, etcetera or should I sanitize? Who helps you in that? Common sense, cerebrum. Next is willpower, he is able to lift that, it is mainly because of willpower. Even you can have that willpower, even you have to use that willpower of yours. Yes, even in this crisis, I am able to score more marks, I am able to do well in my exam, that is willpower. Next, let us come to this session's portions. So, you understood about the cerebrum. So, if you look at cerebrum in a different angle, you can see there are two hemispheres. One is the left cerebral hemisphere and another one is the right cerebral hemisphere. But you observe that they are not separated, there is one small tissue present, corpus callosum there connecting the left and right cerebral hemispheres, both are connected. So, what happens is these cerebral hemispheres will be sending messages from one part to another part and from that part to this part. So, constantly there will be exchange of impulses taking place continuously. So, that is the speciality of these cerebral hemispheres. Next, not only that because of this cerebral hemisphere, you can see that the right side of the body is controlled by left part of the brain. So, right side of the body is controlled by left side of the brain and the left side of the body is controlled by right side of the brain. So, you can see that they are controlling all this. If the person has been attacked by paralysis, he has a stroke like this in the right side. It means that his left part of the brain is affected. So, like that you can conclude that. If you are writing with your right hand, the the activity that helps you to write in the right hand is mainly because of the left side. If the person is a left hander, his right hemisphere will be helping him. So, that is it. Next, we will come to another concept. Now, if you come to diencephalon, you can see that diencephalon, where is it present? And 
this diencephalon has two parts one is the thalamus and another one is the hypothalamus thalamus is the upper portion hypo means below below the thalamus it is present that is why you call it as hypothalamus below that hypothalamus you find pituitary gland which i have already told you where it is etc now if you look at this now what does this hypothalamus do it controls several other functions for example it maintains body temperature you all know that we all are homeothermic animals or warm blooded animals that means our body temperature should remain constant no matter where you are whether you are in himalayas or even in the thar desert your body temperature should be the same in case if it increases it means you are having fever so to maintain that constant body temperature this hypothalamus will help you out not only body temperature it also helps in osmoregulation or balance of the water how much water should be in my body that is decided next not only that the feeling of thirst sometimes you feel thirsty hypothalamus then you sweat hypothalamus hunger feeling of hunger if you eat two idlis sometimes if you eat four idlis your appetite will say enough hypothalamus controls that so like this hypothalamus controls so many other things next we will come to midbrain midbrain is a small portion present inside the brain below the forebrain you understood right you have seen its position now this midbrain its main function is it connects the forebrain with the hindbrain it connects the upper portion of the brain to the lower portion and lower portion of the brain to upper portion it is something like a relay station not only that it is associated with vision hearing motor control and you are sleeping waking up arousal and also temperature regulation all these are controlled by the midbrain wonderful right i want you to make note of all these things i have given you simple sentences for you to easily write down and learn them very easily next we will see hind brain hind brain is the lowest part of the brain let us see what all are present in hind brain one is cerebellum next is pons and finally you find medulla oblongata so these are the three parts let us see where these are present so if you look at this structure so that part where it is flickering green in color you call it as cerebellum okay that is the cerebellum next part you can see a small portion projected bulge like structure that is nothing but the pons next below that you find one small tubular structure starting from that portion you call it as medulla oblongata so these three fully comprise our hind brain so please write down children hind brain consists of cerebellum pons medulla oblongata so these are the three parts now let us see how do they work first one is cerebellum you know that cerebrum is the largest part of the brain cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain so let us see where it is present so that portion which i have marked below that you find cerebellum so it is below the cerebrum and it is behind this cerebrum the frontal region from there it is behind so you understood the location now what does it do so i will give you one small clue cerebellum l l l is projected l means leg you just remember like that using mnemonics l means leg that means whatever activities you do using the leg is controlled by that that means jumping running walking standing erect body balance everything is controlled by this 
cerebellum. So, you can remember by using just that name. Now, please write down the functions of cerebellum. It maintains posture and balance of the body. It also controls body movement. Wrote down. Next, we will come to the next part that is the pons. Okay. Now, let us see what are the functions of the pons. This pons controls voluntary actions, please write down, regulation of respiration, mastication, chewing, chewing and facial expressions, all these are controlled by pons. See, if you want to remember about this pons, there is one clue. I am not uh, you know, advertising any company, but I want you to remember it. You know about face powder, something connected to this name. So, remember that as soon as you hear about this pons, you should remember that face powder. So, where do you apply this face powder? To your face. So, you should remember facial expressions. Where do you do not apply the face powder? To your mouth or teeth. So, chewing, mastication, understood. Do you apply inside your nose? No. So, breathing. So, if you remember at least three functions, you can get good marks. Just by remembering the name, you should be able to remember the functions. So, that is one part of mnemonics. I already told for cerebellum. So, this is for pons. So, it controls breathing. Now, let us come to another part of the brain that is the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So, the information goes from there to here. So, like this information will be moving from one part to another part. There will be always connection with the entire brain. Next, we will come to the last part that is the medulla oblongata. So, that is the lower portion. After that comes the spinal cord. So, that portion you call it as medulla oblongata. Let us see what does it control? It controls heartbeat, heartbeat you can see there. Next, it controls the movement in alimentary canal and also the enzyme secretion. You are seeing the enzyme secretion taking place in the video. So, as soon as the food moves, the secretion of enzymes takes place. This is because of medulla oblongata. Next, let us see another function. So, this feeling of vomiting is controlled by medulla oblongata. Coughing is controlled by medulla oblongata. Swallowing controlled by medulla oblongata. So, if you want to remember that, I will give you one clue. Medulla oblongata O. O, it starts with O. So, remember that O. As soon as you open your mouth O, it means digestion, enzyme secretion swallowing, vomiting, remember all those. Then as soon as you go down, breathing, lungs, then heartbeat. See, just by remembering oblongata, O, you can remember all the functions. So, kindly memorize like that. So, it controls involuntary activities like breathing, heartbeat, movement of digestive tract such as swallowing, vomiting, etcetera. I hope you understood that, including coughing. Next, it maintains blood pressure through secreting enzymes. So, I told you in the digestive canal, it is secreting the enzymes. Please make note of it. So, these are the functions of the medulla oblongata. Now, an important part of your lesson that is how to draw the brain that sir, now sir will be teaching you how to draw the brain. I want you to observe carefully and later on be able to practice it. See children. Namaste one and all. Now, we are going to learn about how the brain is going to be drawn in simple method. Okay. For this one, we have to have some preparations. Let us see now. After that, we can draw easily. See, these are the structures you have to draw. And in this word, you have to make a square. On a square, uh, I have to make a square like this one. In that one, you can draw the brain part and leave 
quarter place, empty place for that one, above that you have to draw. So, by that it will be neatly, it will sit. Now, start drawing like this one from inside the box itself. Now, this much only you can draw like this and extend this is the skull part, outer skull part and now you draw the inner part like this. This is mid brain, mid brain is ready now. Next, in the mid brain, mark like this one and draw like a tree, just you see, tree like I am drawing, clear no? So, next we have to go for this one and above that one, you draw a small bottle guard shape like this. So, it will be nice, no? So, above that one you draw like this. Next, you could draw lines as I am going to draw, observe slowly you draw like this. Okay. From this side also, you can draw little bit, bend and complete this one, clear. So, as it is you draw, okay, you are the back portion of this one ready. Now, to the left you draw one small triangle like, so one triangle like you draw, triangle structure you have to like this one. then join the skull part, complete it. Next, you have to draw inside the tree part. Let us see what I am drawing. Just do this designs like this, a star shaped one and extend and make the designs like this. Then complete the outer portion. just little small curves you can do. So, it will be very nice. So, it is completed. So, inside that you have to make one more line like this make a circle the response. So, this design is completed. Now, let us draw inside parts for this one inside parts for this one you have to draw draw from here taking the mark like this one that is nothing but cerebrum you are drawing now. So, make a curves like this one, one 10 curves you can write this, draw 10 curves like this one, then complete this with the opposite side also and join this together. Next complete like this. Next take the W bubble shape or structure you have to draw. So, that inside that you have to draw, draw neatly and maybe 4 or 5 it will fit in that one. Okay. Now, in the curved corners you have to draw birds flying like structures to make it to appear the let us check the parts. Okay. Neatly you draw this side and the side and in between you, this also you can extend little bit. It looks better. So, like that and here and there you can put one or two lines like this one inside this bubbles. Yeah, it, uh, it should looks as a part and a brain and here you draw one cashew nut, cashew nut shape complete the triangle and draw one cashew nut type in the structures as well as draw lines four lines compactly that means very near to each other draw four lines, two lines nearer and one line like that. That is the meninges what you are to draw. Okay. And this triangle draw one small cashew nut inside that one. Okay. Now, this part appear should be appear little bulged one. So, make it little bulging part. Okay. That is called medulla, medulla oblongata started. Now, your brain is ready. Namaste one and all. So, thank you very much sir for teaching our children how to draw the diagram. So, next we will see some home assignment that is homework to you people. Write down, list out the functions of the following. 
one is cerebrum cerebellum midbrain and medulla oblongata next question a person is suffering due to head injury when examined his respiratory system was fine then what may be the reason for his problem next draw the diagram of human brain and label the parts beside the labels write the functions of these parts and then practice next it is quiz time the part of the brain responsible for facial expression is cerebrum cerebellum pons medulla oblongata correct answer is pons next one the part of the brain responsible for enzyme secretion during digestion cerebrum cerebellum cerebellum pons medulla oblongata correct answer is medulla oblongata next question the part of the brain responsible for walking erect and body balance same options cerebrum cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata correct answer is cerebellum next the part of the brain responsible for swallowing and vomiting same option cerebrum cerebellum pons medulla oblongata correct answer is medulla oblongata one more quiz question here here the teacher is holding a dried papaya leaf from his garden if you look at the portion of the stalk of the leaf that portion is slightly dried that is why the leaf has fallen down can you tell me the hormone plant hormone that is responsible for the formation of this brown color i will give you the options auxins gibberellins cytokinins and abscisic acid so the correct answer is yes abscisic acid now we'll go to the next uh, we'll go to the next question okay here you can see a girl is holding the stem of a lemon plant you can see that she is showing you the nodal region between two leaves can you tell me which one will help this plant to grow its height can you name the plant hormone i'll give you the options auxins gibberellins cytokinins and finally abscisic acid correct answer gibberellins okay thank you very much so many people have assisted me to do all this activities and also this lesson i thank them all and i also thank you for listening to my class and i want you to study well and do well thank you bye bye